This is an audio slate for dive 2015. UTC time is 21.25. Strike that, 21.26.05. Mark. He's coming up, hold on. Uh, yeah, Triclops is good. All nominal, thank you. Control, control, back deck, all stop, five zero meters, transferring control up. Copy, all stop.
All good. Do you remember the Zoom Lim in? Thank you. So I just labeled them white and telly because it's less confusing. Way less confusing. Right. Do you want to get in on this? Um, I was just going to get data lab 4 set up because this is each the new dial. There you go. Thank you to all of you who are joining us. This is Dive 2014. We are on the South Point Pinnacles. And a slight deviation from our original launch time for some minor updates. We appreciate those of you that have stuck around to follow along. This dive should be approximately nine hours, weather permitting, if there are no changes. Our expected maximum depth is 1,421 meters. And our goal for this, our objective for this, ex, uh, for this mission is to continue to get some really, really, really good 3D models in the imaging using the tri, tri what do we call it, triclops. So we're looking to get to one of the ridges and traverse up that ridge, continuing on with the imagery as well as collecting some data for the organisms that we find along the way, collecting temperature, salinity, dissolved oxygen data, all to be recorded and used. Is Ignacio in here with us today? Yes, he is. And those of you sending in messages, we just want you to know how much we appreciate them. 
I just recently got one in regards to a school using their commons area that has TV screens and they set up the live feed. Slowly and surely they see kids start to congregate around the screens and next thing you know you've got clubs that are joining, robotics, photography, all these students using this as a wonderful resource to continue their education beyond the classroom. Do you have an idea of where? They the did not say where that was. Uh, it came in anonymous, so um, I don't know. Maybe that maybe they're watching and they can get back yeah, on yeah, and let yeah. us know because I think that's really cool. I feel bad the nature of this project with uh, diving for eight to twelve hours and then processing data the other uh, half of the workday. Uh, it leaves you know these time zones excluded almost from yes. seeing the the dive footage, and uh, so it's great to hear that that they might be in a time zone where they can catch most of the dive. Absolutely, and if not for anything, at least the highlight reel. Hi, Veronica. We're scheduled for around nine hours today for this dive. Should carry us into the evening hours. A lot of people asking about our ROV operations as well, hoping that you guys would chime in some on this dive. They're interested in your work and what you're doing. Is there a specific question, Devin? No, just just asking that they just chime in and let us know what they're doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They're al they're always here. They're making it happen. Uh, I'm Robert Waters, sitting in the pilot's Herc pilot seat, and uh, we are doing our descent right now. So uh, we're just trying to keep the vehicles stretched out and uh, navigate the ship over on top of the bottom target we're going to, which is at the base of a a pretty steep slope. So. That's what we're currently doing. Bob, do you do you have to stick it the whole time, or is there controls that allow you to automatically kind of? So yeah, I can uh, I can set a fixed control for my rate of descent, and then uh, right now I have to drive ahead a bit because the ship's backing up. So uh, yeah, normally I just set a little bit of a head bias, and then I don't have to. D have my hands on the wheel, yeah. kind of cruise control. Is it, um, is it like cruise control? Is there like obstacle avoidance? Or is there anything that alerts you when anything strange happens? Or will it just continue doing what you, like cruise, continue yeah, our, doing what you're Yeah, our system is not set up to do like, uh, like an automatic bottom approach or something. Okay. Like. Uh, a lot of systems you can do that. You can just program in. We're going to this depth, and it'll it'll drive the winch automatically down to that depth and stop. So, <coughs> there's good <coughs> good and bad associated with that, obviously. Yeah. And then, Human, what's your responsibilities? You want to introduce yourself as the at Atlanta Pilot. You go down on the SBO. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, my name is I'm uh, from Los Angeles, California. I'm a master's student in mechanical engineering at the University of Southern California. And I'm an ROV engineering intern this trip. And I'm uh, 
piloting Atalanta, which it pretty much serves as like a like a second set of eyes for Hercules, so you can watch Hercules and see the tether that connects them. Okay. And as well, it's uh, it's like connected to the winch and lets Hercules explore a little bit more with more maneuverability. And same thing, do you have, are you on some sort of auto or do you, because what, <laughs> what controls do you have? You have, you can drive the winch, right? Yeah, right now I'm on the winch. Um, eh, yeah, it's not really auto, but uh, we're just holding the, the winch control in the same spot. So it, it's going down at a, I guess, a set rate of descent. What is the rate currently? Uh, 25? Yeah. 25, 25 meters 26. a minute yeah yeah a yeah. minute so for those at home please uh chime into the chat if yes. we're going at 25 meters a minute to the bottom and johan our target is how deep we're going to 1421 there it is 1421 so uh 43 minutes oh don't come on ah. <laughs> we were going to have a contest. There was probably a sticker going in the mail or something oh out to goodness. the winner. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. 43 <laughs> minutes. But, uh, all right. We can play the same game on the way up, I guess, yeah, in yes, about eight sure. hours. <laughs> we do have a marine science and biology class tuning in from American Samoa. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's so exciting because we're going to be headed to American Samoa coming I up. I heard. I heard. Not only with the the this Nautilus ROV exploration, but we've got all kinds of cool technology that we're taking out there with us too. So it's exciting. Yeah, from the marine biology classes to engineering and I robotics. I gotta figure out how to get in on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't wait. It's gonna be exciting. We've actually got part of our team is in a little advanced in uh, mission in Palau. Oh. Right now. So we, Nautilus is gonna be making our way across the Western Pacific and really, really We may excited. be having a meeting with uh, some of the principals in Palau oh, this, cool. this afternoon to start, I guess, to start setting the, that up. Oh, so we can so get what some are they classes doing in on Palau board. besides scuba diving? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, they had a they had a, a meeting with the president of Palau and water a, quality and, uh, checks. That's yeah, what water it is. quality <laughs> checks. Yeah. Well, look no. at how clear blue it is. <laughs> it's probably 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure, 50-50 work. Right. <laughs> so Daniel was out on the last, the expedition previous to 155, or 154, that was epically successful with the aircraft carrier dives, and so he deserves a, nice. a break. Allison did the uh, the ONC expedition, so they're all out there, I'm sure, getting a little R&R &R while doing some official business. There you go. So folks have been following along the last couple of days. We've been on the north side of Molokai diving in these columnar basalt formations. We've completely shifted gears and overnight transited to the Big Island. Um, so we're just off the Big Island, the south side of the Big Island, and we're going to dive on what we, we've been referring to as the South Point Pinnacles. Um, this is, this is going to be an exciting dive. Maybe Travis can jump in and talk about kind of the plan for the dive and what we might see, the objectives that his team laid out. Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, this should be a really exciting dive. It was sort of first dove on in this area in 1998. They saw a lot of really cool rock features uh, covered with some some corals and crinoids, so lots of biology living, living on them. And they returned about uh, 13 years later in 2011 um, to do some exploration work with the National Geographic. And there's some mysterious notes uh, that the pinnacle was not found. Mm. So pretty excited to be exploring this and see, um, yep, just how exciting are these features uh, along this ridge line here. And we're gonna be surveying basically from the bottom all the way up so we can see, yeah, how does biology, you know, differ? How are these communities varying across this depth gradient? Um, and this is going to be uh, part of a master's thesis work by a student in my lab, Ignacia Rueda. So we're really excited about this opportunity, really looking forward to what we'll see um, 
on this undersea mountain. So you can sort of imagine like as you're walking up a mountain uh, on land and you see all the plants and everything change, we're sort of doing the same thing, but thousands of meters under the sea. So pretty cool. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. You're going to collect temperature data, salinity data, oxygen, with the dissolved oxygen data. Tell me about that. Like, what does that allow you to discover? Yeah, so, I mean, oxygen is the universal currency of life. Uh, so basically, we, we as animals all need oxygen to breathe. And so uh, in the ocean, there's much less oxygen than there is in the air. And uh, even more so at depth, when we have sort of these sinking organic matter and particles, uh, microbes are breaking that down, consuming that oxygen. So there's even less oxygen at depth in a lot of places available to these organisms. And they need to breathe and respire oxygen just like us. And so that's why we're really interested in any gradients of oxygen and uh, looking at potential thresholds for where certain organisms like to live compared to others. Um, yeah, so that's, awesome. that's sort of our highlight there. And um, a lot of some of the previous work in these areas have found um, mostly things are varying with depth, but um, this environmental data that we're collecting from Hercules along with this big 3D photogrammetry model uh, should be really impressive. So uh, if all goes according to plan, we'll have uh, a model that's about a kilometer and a half, so about a mile, um, over hundreds of meters sort of up this, up this slope to look at changes in those communities and, nice. and the chemistry data. The photogrammetry that, that Travis was describing will be collected using the new wide field camera array. And maybe Bob, you could, uh, can we get the, cam the cameras into one of the feeds that's going out over the satellite? If you uh, B could do that. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a great question. I'm not seeing that up right now. Let me double check. Maybe porch out. And, uh, oh, you want to just yeah, if we could just see physically look at the cameras. Oh, yeah, yeah. we yeah. should describe Sorry. what. Going on. I got you. I thought you wanted to put the view. Yes. Oh, no, no. So did I. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> just like, uh, just so we can talk it out. Yeah, I can uh, retract this guy. You can see him. Yeah, so on satellite feed one, uh, in the lower portion of the image, that's the porch on the front of Hercules. And the three titanium housings you can see there are the wide field camera array. And, we, you know, we uh no. referred to it as triclops on the ship and in this configuration the two cameras on the port and starboard are fisheye lens cameras and going to be collecting a 180 degree image each and then the camera in the center is the cinema cam and that's got uh, a more traditional lens on it and is facing dead ahead and so we have the ability to capture almost 220 degrees of images as we move up this uh, mountain as Travis described it and so previously with Herc just the Herc camera we could create the same sort of model but the field of view would be uh, limited and so here we have not only a wider field of view but much more resolution so the fidelity of the model can be that much more powerful and in doing some sort of analysis about the specific types of animals that we see, the quantity and their size, you know, that resolution all becomes helpful because it allows you to measure with, with more accuracy. So this is a really, really interesting test for this camera system. Yeah, and so building on that a little bit, one of the really cool things with having these multiple cameras too is that you get multiple perspectives on the same object. So you can sort of see the difference between uh, those objects relative to other objects in that field of vision. And so uh, this enables us to sort of map with a much higher uh, resolution and precision um, so we can do even better at recreating that, that undersea habitat. So really looking forward to seeing what we can see here with imaging uh, some of these deep sea corals. Uh, it's been doing some really incredible things with these rock features we've been looking at the past few days. So pretty excited for that. 
Good stuff. Who else do we have with us that has a... Kristen, do you want to introduce yourself? It's probably a great opportunity to uh, a standard O&R plugs here. Yeah. Nope, can't hear you. Just got to tap it down. Scale. There, there we go. go. There we go. Uh, yeah, so I'm Dr. Kristen Mitchell, and I am with uh, the Office of Naval Research, and I w run two of the largest Navy uh, internship programs, the Science and Engineering application uh, Science and Engineering Apprenticeship Program for high school students, uh, which is an eight-week paid internship uh, at one of approximately 38 naval labs around the country. Um, and the applications are open now for next summer. So the application closes November 1st at midnight. And the Naval Research Enterprise Internship Program, which is our undergraduate and graduate 10-week paid internship program at approximately 50 naval labs around the country. Um, that application is also due November 1st by midnight, um, so we hope to receive many applications. Um, and you get to work with a mentor at one of the Navy labs and work on Navy relevant, um, you know, either science or engineering, or we have, we cover all kinds of different types of um, areas of research from medical to ocean science to um, ROVs to um, uh, naval historical um, sites where they dive on wrecks and do some sort of archaeology of what they're looking at as well. Kristen, do the interns have to wear uniforms? They do not have to wear uniforms. You are a civilian and you were not enlisted in the Navy in any way. So uh -huh. there is no boot camp. There is no... Um, None of that. You're a civilian, and you're actually a contractor employee with, with um, one of the labs through the Office of Naval Research. Excellent question. I no, get that question a lot. No, all the time you've been describing this, <laughs> I, I kind of need the answer, but I, yeah. it dawned on me that this could be really confusing for someone yes. who's listening, who's excited, but yet like nervous about yeah, maybe that's, service. That's one of the na number one questions we get. Do I have to do boot camp? And the answer is no. <laughs> no boot camp. Yeah, David, I'm going to step out. Okay. And just building on that, too, I think, um, you know, just highlighting that, you know, a lot of this cruise is supported by the Office of Naval Research. And, um, you know, they have this whole scientific o ocean exploration. Um, they're really trying to understand our oceans. And so they fund a lot of scientific research, and there's a lot of opportunities available to uh, students and academics and sort of different career paths in oceanography. Uh, to get out there, get on a boat, and uh, yeah, explore. What would you guys say? I had a I had a class today that uh, asked me why it was important that they understand and learn yeah, and know about moving? the ocean. Okay. In Tennessee, how well, do you explain that to a landlocked? I'm, uh, I'm pretty okay with that, as long as it tethers. Uh, wow. Yeah. I mean, where to even begin? Exactly. <laughs> right. So We're I mean, okay. the oceans. You know, it's about 70% of our planet, the, the vast majority of our, you know, we're the blue marble. So um, we're an ocean planet more than we are a land planet. Uh, the oceans are absolutely critical for, for transferring heat around mm -hmm. the planet. But thank uh, you for checking uh, up in, on In you. recent decades, <laughs> we've seen really rapid uh, heat uptake by our surface oceans and sort of transferring some of that heat to deeper depths. So if you think it was hot this year, imagine if we didn't have those oceans soaking yes. up all that extra heat. Um, and they're also really important for, for global oxygen production. So about half of the oxygen produced, again, that uh, universal currency, we all love oxygen. And you know, one of the biggest myths I've seen or my students would think that the rainforest was the biggest producer of oxygen. Not so. Yeah, so about half on land, half in the ocean. Yeah. and. Um, yeah, so phytoplankton, really strong producers for oxygen. A lot of that actually ends up, you know, staying in, in the seawater and supporting a lot of marine life. Uh, that marine life is um, sort of sequestering carbon as it sinks to the bottom. So our oceans are also not only sort of buffering against uh, global warming, they're also taking up carbon to reduce the slow and sort of burying that to the seafloor. Uh, so really important for, for regulating climate. All that organic matter, all of that phytoplankton, um, that's the fish we eat. So even if you're 
in Tennessee. I'm sure you're seeing some, some ocean fish on your plates. That's right. So All connected. We're all connected to the ocean. Absolutely. And all that rain that we're seeing on land, you know, a lot of that comes up evaporating in the ocean, forming mm -hmm. clouds, rains out on, on yep. the land. So, um, yeah, that connection is super important. Um, it, us as a sort of a global Earth system, everything's tied in. Not much really leaves here. Yeah. Except for, you know, the, the odd spacecraft or, um, yeah, a little, That's little bit of helium or something. But, yeah, we're all, we're all stuck in here and, um, you know, transferring energy around. So That's right. I truly do try to connect everything that I teach to how it all comes back and starts right there at the ocean. So. Yeah, this is something I really love, you know, it's sort of a biogeochemist looking at, looking at different systems. Um, it's really fun because you're, you're literally looking at the exchange of energy um, uh, materials around the planet and you really don't have to go far to see just how important uh, adjacent systems are for each other. Absolutely. Let's get a current status of our depth. 764 meters. Just about a little over halfway. And sadly, just as I'm getting started, my shift is now officially over. That delay put us back a little bit, but that's okay. I get to watch from the from the backside, and you guys get to continue to watch online. Please continue to send in your questions. Let us know that you're there, that you're watching. We look forward to hearing from you. Uh, look forward to taking you along this journey with us. Uh, Ale is up next, and she is she's on the next shift till four till four. So Ale will be here with you and I will be back if we're still operating at eight o'clock. Have a great rest of your day.
Hi guys, welcome to the 12 to 4 watch. We are currently at 997 meters in depth and we are descending. Um, we're going to be looking at South Point Pinnacle. Closer. Um, we're going to be diving on South Point Pinnacles, which should be some really cool formations. I'm looking at the messages coming in and it looks like somebody from my hometown who works at my school is giving us a shout out. Hi, whoever you are. So we're going to be um, scanning these, taking photos, video, um, to make uh, 3D models of these pinnacles right near the Big Island. And it looks like Pisces 4 and 5 have been down here in 1998 and 2011. Larry, do you want to talk a little bit about what we're going to see? Sure. Well, there. You can really hear me. I yes. guess I was having trouble hearing you. So I, Sorry, I I'll talk louder. Up, I, don't I turned up the volume. Oh. Let, let me turn it down a little. Okay, so we're we're um, descending now. We're about a uh, thousand seventy-five meters right now, heading down probably uh, down about fourteen hundred. Is that the the base? Yeah. So about fourteen hundred meters, and it's the base of these uh, features that were described, as Allah said, uh, by uh, some submersible dives. Uh, uh, one way back in 1998 and another in uh, 2011 that uh, described these uh, pinnacles, as they call them, these really spectacular geologic features, quite vertical, um, covered with a, an abundance of life, uh, crinoids and corals and things like that. Um, and uh, originally we were going to come down and, and on our way down uh, use the new high-resolution multi-beam sonar, uh, the Norbit, that's on uh, Hercules uh, and get a, a base map, but uh, there was a, a small electrical problem with a, a junction box, and so we, we have to forego the Norbit on this run. Hopefully that'll be uh, sorted out, and, and uh, tomorrow when we come back, hopefully we can get that, because that's a wonderful addition to have that multi-beam map, the sonar map, which gives us a, a br much broader perspective of the, of the countryside, so to speak. And uh, so now we'll be heading right down to the bottom uh, and then starting a slow transect up, and that's to uh, to feed Jonathan's high-resolution cameras. <laughs> and so we have the the three cameras, the two uh, fish island, the two fish islands cameras. You can see them actually, I think, in uh, yeah. uh, no any yeah one, in, uh, uh, satellite feed uh, one. Yeah, has the the two uh, fish eye cameras pointing out at about what's the angle? Oh, Jonathan's got to put his. Hey Larry, what uh, PC are those on? Um, uh, I can only say it's on. Or is Jonathan in here? On, yeah, Jonathan's in the back. It's on feed feed one. I don't know. Um, I don't Sorry, know. Uh, what was the question, Dan? Uh, what are we running? Uh, we will be running um, the production Mac for OBS visualization today. So we'll need to replace that with uh, Triclops PC. So we got to put. Salvo. What? Are you going to have, have it on Triclops PC or no? I'm not going to have it on Triclops PC, only production Mac. Right. yesterday. 
I'll bring a view of that up here. And is it in one of the PCs already? In the KVM? It must be. It is. Uh, it, it is. PC it is yep. Roger, PC4. Uh, we are still uh, going through some checklists back here, so I don't have it up right now. It's just a pretty screensaver. You don't want it up right now? I don't have it up right now. It's just a pretty screensaver. But is Jonathan going out over <laughs> SPL? No. Yeah. Probably not. Oh, maybe he is. PC4, you say. Okay, because I'm, I'm not hearing you on the headset. I'm just hearing you <laughs> in the air. I can I can hear you on SPL. Okay, interesting. Let's see. I can hear him. All right, so it's a You're problem on my end. Yeah. You you're at SCL. I'm on SC side left, yeah. side left. Okay. Side left. How's their? Uh, oh, I shouldn't bother. I'm Try now, ask how their Say something. Was. Hello. Say again. Hi, Larry. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Okay. Yay, Jonathan. Yeah. That's what happened to the uh, Ethernet bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I am not on SPL, by the way. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. I can hear you. I'm only on SPL. Oh, I'm talking. I'm talking. Oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> that is very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> But, but, it, but, it, but it's actually very good, Dan. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. Your, your banter uh, <laughs> adds agree. tremendous, it's tremendously yeah. to, to Great to my, 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 my sailor language surfaces. <laughs> <laughs> I try and leave that outside the control van. Well, I've, yeah. I've, got, I've got the big red button here, you know. So, so <laughs> I just uh, can hit that at any moment. When I first started, they had a swear jar right here for mm -hmm. me. I had to put a dollar in it every time I talk like my... And I always laugh because... And that's um, how Nautilus got its multi-beam, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> that. One season. And so, I, so I always laugh a, a comment just came in, Dan, that said that they can hear you and there's a Dan fan in the house. Yeah. Oh, that right. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, number one Dan fan. Yeah, wow. It's funny, the... Uh, the Communications at lead always gives the one of the during our our um, all hands meeting in the beginning they talk about you know how to conduct ourselves professionally in here and don't say anything you wouldn't want your grandma Which one to is that? hear. Hey, well, yeah. <laughs> and I always chuckle if you ever heard my grandma, <laughs> your ears will be burning. Um, Taylor, and this is probably maybe a question for you. Have you guys ever seen any mega pinna? on your expeditions and if not do you hope to see one um, i'm not too sure what the common name is of that or if that is the common name um let me look it up terrell is looking up magna pinna magna pinna magna, magna pinna is it a squid uh, if, it, if it's a vampire squid then yes we've seen that before but that's just I guess. Let's see. Hello. Oh, the big, the really, oh. really gigantic squid. I don't think so. No, I don't think we've seen that. Mm -hmm. That would be really cool, though. Yeah, that would be really cool. And big, a little scary. <laughs> big fin squid is the common name. Big fin squid. Yeah. No, not not from what I'm seeing in our, our searches. The Ogianus Explorer has seen one, though. Yeah, uh, it sounds like a long-time viewer is saying Nautilus has never seen a Magna Pinna squid. But we're always hoping to see one. <laughs> wow, yeah, that is a stunning squid. The vampire squids are also really cool. Yeah, we've seen that. Yeah, I'm good. You can have that. Craft check. So Taylor and do you know why they're called vampire squid? I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure why they are called that. That's a great question. Um, 
I have not personally seen one on a, on an expedition. I just know that we have seen one before. Mm. It's bioluminescent. Jonathan, are you seeing both stereo cameras? I don't see the starboard one. Jo Jonathan doesn't have his headset on. Mm. I have any questions. Dan, go ahead, ask the question again. To go ahead, Dan. Um, are you seeing the streams from the stereo cameras? Uh, yeah, we're seeing the stream right now. We're just troubleshooting some things here in the back. 10.1.70.213 forward slash motion JPEG underscore screen. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Okay. Yeah, stand by. Roger. I was just curious on uh, whether they could see the manips or not. So when you get it, if you could flash it up there, we'll try and get the porch adjusted and. Did you just extend porch out? I actually tucked it back in a little. We can get okay. through the. We're breaking the speed limit on the way down. Well, we're running a yellow light, actually. We're we're at 33 meters a minute. Roger. What's our estimated time down? All right. Oh, I got to put my glasses back on. Our estimated time to the seabed is uh, one minute. Okay. Oh, we're, we're at 13.56 right now. Stand by, please. All right. Let's, let's cut down on the banter here and let them uh, approach the seabed, please. that? Uh, no. <coughs> no, I will. Um, I'm still 50 meters off the deck, but if you slow down a bit, that would be good. It's embarrassing to uh, crash your cameras into the seabed. Usually I look for uh, the, um, when this goes green, four beams, and I knew we were getting close because you see noise in the Atlantis sonar there. You can see the hill. So, um, actually, I'm going to get you to, uh, why don't you come, I'll stop there. I'm going to come under you and come to, to the uphill side of you, so Atlanta's in the deeper water. So you're all stopped, right? So can you kick in your uh, auto heading, please? Uh, I wonder if we try a soft reboot first. No, we'll just go full hard. Okay. Hey, Dan. Yeah. Can we get a hard reboot for Triclops, please? Right. Let's do a full 60 second wait. Yeah, I'm gonna turn them off for a minute and then, uh, uh, I gotta make some moves here. Roger, thank you. What's our uh, bearing on this dive? Is it to the north -ish? No, to the west. To the west-ish. Basically, yeah, first uphill, couple waypoints are due west. There. Yeah, uphill there. Roger. Yeah, it's just straight uphill. <laughs> well, I see a uphill here in my Atlanta sonar, but I failed horribly at mass, so it's hard for me to work that out, and I still get that left, right, west, east, all business. Okay, for the folks outside, we're, we're approaching the bottom now, so we're going to keep quiet back here and let the pilots uh, settle in, find the bottom, and then we'll start our ascent, and we can start talking again from the back. Oh, uh, you can, nice. um, Yeah, we've had it for a while. You can um, look down with your Atlanta camera, about if you set it about 45 in that angle of the dangle there. And bring your head uh, 270. 270, yes, please. That's going to be our general direction of. Left turn, Clyde. Sorry, I'm monkeying with my mask here. I'm fogging up. Oops. Mm. 
Okay, you want to uh, chase me down a little bit? I'm so I'm 20 meters off the seabed there, in theory. Uh, yeah, you can maintain a, like a 20 meter delta there while I come down. Uh, video, can you put Atlantis Iris in auto, please? Thank you. It's about to have a seizure up here. There's a visual on seabed. Yep. Starting to see the bottom on with both systems. Uh, Jonathan, triclops are powered back up just now. All right, we're ready to come back up. I uh, just now powered them up. Roger. I, we're going to do some other business here, so give us a few seconds. Thank you. Um, why is that thing? Can you uh, record those numbers? I'm burning them into my little reptile brain at the moment. They are nominal, but yeah. yeah, usually we try and do a um, on bottom gauge check. So that's the most important one to get. So you can write them on the back of a piece of paper right now. Oh, oh yeah. Are the numbers similar to what you got there? Okay, good enough. It's kind of our baseline, so. Uh, you know, if they move a lot from that, so I'll kind of, when we get to the bottom, I'll do a mental, like where are the comps? And um, if I see anything change, then I'm, I, uh, I freak out. If they don't change, I'm not too bothered. <laughs> Thank you. What's that? Yeah, we usually put a note in the log, the on bottom, like at the far left, you know, on seabed at da da da. 1400 uh, meters and the time. Okay, now let's do the car check. Um, so, Jonathan, <laughs> if you got if you got video from those cameras, stand by. What I'd like to do here before we start moseying on is get the porch tucked in as far as possible, where you're happy and not seeing the manips. And then leave it. So, uh, Roger, one second, please. He, yeah, he's still rebooting. <coughs> we're we're back online, but it'll take me a second to get the cameras configured. Stand by. Right. I don't care about the. If you can just show me an image right now, I can get that yep. set up. One second. One thousand one. It's a dollar a second, by the way. All right, Ian. Patience is <laughs> neither one of our virtues. No, it's not. <laughs> That's why I love you, man. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> error, error, error. Ignore. Disconnect. And uh, video, I think we're going to, if uh, the watch lead is OK with it, I would like to forego the weight balance. Okay. Check. So you have some white balance recalls over there. Uh, just because we have a lot of glass and jewelry hanging out on the front of the vehicle, and I'm not really keen about getting that uh, potential so that's fine with me. Wi window I breaker out. I wholeheartedly agree. Thank yep. you. They uh, will likely remain powered in the OFF mode for this. Uh, for this dive unless we have to get them out to All right. cut ourselves out of some fishing I just barely something. see the manip out of 212. To starboard. Uh, and what about the port one? Port's fine. Uh, are you, are you? Port's fine. Yeah. Uh, let me see something here. So if I and how about the light 
blasting on the stereo cameras. Um, can you turn off mids, please? No, uh, we have no occlusion of light. I'm, I'm pretty happy, actually. With that position? Yeah. Okay, that was a wild guess on my part. So yep. let me just... Uh, can you just try racking in or out and let's see how... how uh, I would like to have them racked in a little more, actually. So I can move the starboard manipulator. Yeah. So you still can't see the port one? Just barely. Just move it out just a smidgen on the port there. There you go. Now let me check starboard. Uh, if you just wrist around, it might be. Okay. I'm going to porch out and then fire up the minute. I mean, honestly, that's not, we're not going to see much in that one spot, so it doesn't actually bother me. Okay, I'm happy to leave it there if you. Let's if let's leave bothered. it there. I'd rather not have a a minip hanging out. I would a minip, rather not yeah. either. Okay, and so if I Zeus all the way out, which I believe I am, it's just, oh wait, I'm not. Why is this? Why does the rocker change it? Rocker is disabled. We must have rebooted. Give me a second here. Um, I have to press a button. <coughs> Sample tray, no. Tool tray, no. Pen and tilt instead. Ah, that's better. So, uh, <coughs> yeah. Mm, what lights do I have on? eight meters up so okay I think we're all uh, set how are you Chris you good yeah I'm happy all right everybody's ready you good Jonathan yep I think um, at the first available big rock I would like to uh, do a focus check on the lenses uh, this isn't super ideal right now, just I'm, given the. Uh, I'm still eight meters up, so. Oh well, there you go. So uh, if we can if we can get to a good position, um, I'll do a focus check real quick, and then we can start the transect. Start the transect. In, in right. anger. Okay. All right. So uh, we've uh, got Hercules uh, just off the bottom at about 1,412 meters. That's about eight meters off the bottom, so 1,420 is probably the bottom depth here. Uh, Jonathan, Dan. I've been adjusting the cameras, adjusting the lights, getting everything ready for this uh, long transect up from about 1,400 meters to a peak of about 800 meters. And hopefully we've got some uh, spectacular scenery in between here and there. Yet to be seen, but I just so the rumor goes. I'm going to do one more thing here and neglect it. I'm just going to play with the Z-Bias, check our ballast, but it should be similar to what it has been. Kind of do that on the fly. And I usually get it, try and get an idea which way the wind is blowing. But yeah, you can chase me down, down five. I'm going to uh, just set this for uh, cause I can see it out of the corner of my eye there. A half a porch. Is that pillow lava? Could be pillow lava. Yes, that's definitely pillow lava, yeah. Really? Yeah. Neat. See these little... Uh, as the lava comes out, it's cooled on the water, kind of like a tooth coming out of like a toothpaste tube, gets a crusty rind, and then it bursts through the crust and forms another and another of these little bulbous hey forms. Hey, Jonathan, you can uh, see like some focus, focus action from there on Cinema Camp. It's really Thank cool. Uh, stand by. Roger, standing by. Two and two is looking good. Two, one, four. 2998 video ProRes 422 raw exposure 1 60th of a second. EV is at zero. Shutter is 
minutes. So um, the immediate steep uphill, Chris, appears to be to the uh, northwest, 315. You look at uh, Atlantis sonar. Uh, yeah, I guess a bit. Okay. I'm gonna, uh, might fly, uh, <coughs> might do this here and see, are you floating, Hark? I'm going to come back up just a bit for a minute. I'm going to click in some autos here. I'm going to play with this. Okay, um, I just need to check with Rachel one more thing, and then I think I'm ready to go. Hey, Rachel. Yeah. Uh, these, this is really a beautiful yeah, example uh, of pillow lobby. Yeah, it's, it's really, really pretty. It's quite amazing. Timer not too wide. Yeah, I was just uh, uh, yeah. noting that the texture of these kind of look like concha bread, like that sweet bread. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen a pillow lava quite with this much texture on it in a while. Does that mean they're um, ancient, older pillow lobas to no, get that? No, it, it might be just the obvious. The opposite. No, I think, I think part of it is where we're seeing them here, too. I mean, mm -hmm. Remember, that probably we've seen most of them have been subaerial. Okay. Yeah. We mm -hmm. are uh, now in time-lapse mode. We're taking one photo on each camera every three seconds. So let's, let's boogie. Let's start. Okay. On our way up. Elevator right. going up. I am. Um, <laughs> Dan, you want to go straight to the waypoint, or you want to go up slope? Um, that call is above my pay grade, but uh, how far are we from the waypoint? I always, I always prefer up slope, and then we kind of follow our local and, nose. And so. it should be southwest, yeah, because it's the slope is to the to our yeah. to our to the left of uh, so I'll just Atlanta. Bring Larry up to speed there. So. Uh, what we often do on these science dives, so we have uh, our bathymetry, right, which is probably, you know, 7,500 meter grid. Mm -hmm. And then we have the local terrain, which is, you know, you could drop Nautilus into one of those pixels so you can't right. determine the local hill. So often at the discretion of the watch lead, we will... Pick your way, on, pick your own way up. Yeah, we'll kind yep. of follow our nose on the way up. And in this case, you can see Atlanta sonar to the northwest mm -hmm. of yep. us, or right. about That's a spot. bearing of 315. That's going to be uh, more terrain. Yep. So yep. you're, you're more likely to see uh, high density communities if we kind of do that. Right. I think what we want to do is straight. Yeah. No, I think what we want to do is get uh, as, as orthogonal to the wall as we can and, and move our way up. Right. Uh, I think the waypoints are, are relatively arbitrary. And What's our... Uh, um, is that... Sorry, you're right, Chris, the other way. South, yeah. Yeah, two southwest. Two yeah. What's our current standoff distance, sir? I'm um, currently up about five meters. I came up a bit while I was yeah. monkeying about there. I would, I'd probably request uh, maybe three meter standoff. Yeah, I'll, once we get going, I'll... Um, All right. I'll come down a little I'm going to start the ship moving. Yeah, yeah. if you can, if you can yeah. just call that out, whatever you're comfortable with, so Taylor Ann can get that documented. Roger, you want to bring your head uh, I guess to we got our lasers working again, both of them. Try to look at 225. Yeah, I was going to ask, do we, need the, do we want the lasers on? Is that okay, or will that disrupt photogrammetry? It will, will it disrupt it, but maybe since we have the availability, let's right. call a mark at the hour and um, data log, turn on the lasers, because they, they are very helpful for reorienting Science. the model. Okay. So yeah. once, once an hour? Once an hour. Once I'd like hour. that. That sounds okay. great. Okay. All right. Got that? Yeah. yeah, Travis, uh, do you guys sounds good. want it more or off? Once an hour seems okay. good. Yeah, we'll get yeah. some scaling. And yeah, that'd are be you awesome. ready to start moving? Yeah. Yeah. We are already ready. Bridge, bridge, nav. 
five zero meters two two five. Okay, so you want them up now? Oh uh, yeah, we can turn the lasers off, please. Yeah, Dan, if you can have Roger, the Roger. lasers turned off, please. Lasers are off. Thank you. So there was a question about why yesterday's larvae looked like pizza boxes um, as compared to what we're seeing now, which are uh, pillow basalts. These pillow basalts are extruded directly into, into the ocean um, and cooled really, really quickly, creating a, almost a glassy outside to them. And uh, with the lava continuing to move on the inside, you think about it like being squeezed out of a, a toothpaste tube and forming a crust and then bursting through the next one, you can see kind of blob after blob after blob. So that's how we get the texture today. What we saw yesterday was something very different, something called columnar basalts. And these are things that cool very, very slowly. Um, and it's a big column of, basalt, of magma that cools slowly and starts from the surface uh, forming uh, cracks. And those cracks propagate, propagate down through the, through the lava as it starts to shrink when it cools. and it shrinks and cools in mm -hmm. this hexagonal or pentagonal Did you uh, zoom it or did it shape? And okay. so we get these very large uh, columns of basalt. Now the question is why did it look like pizza boxes? And that's a really good question. I'm not sure I I've ever really seen that texture in a columnar basalt before. I'm sure other people have. But it may be that there was some stress relief in the horizontal direction. Or it could be uh, that it's actually representing some subtle difference of individual small little flows that built up the big flow, flow that cooled slowly. So geologists can make up all kinds of stuff, and I can be making up stuff too. But maybe there's somebody out there who knows better, better than I do. I'm, I'm certainly not a petrologist. So Larry, I think that what would maximize our time when we're waiting for ship moves is to, at your direction, um, fly around in little mini mow the lawn patterns, or uh, otherwise it, finding areas uh, Absolutely of fine to me, but I, what I would uh, want to do is not move too far. I mean, we're trying to get towards the wall. Oh yeah, I just meant while okay. we're waiting for the ship moves towards I can uh, towards I can turn myself down a little. Is that... Uh, well, I, I have a master volume here. I don't know if that's an out, outward going volume, but uh, am I a little quieter now? Yeah. No, I don't think there's outgoing. Uh, I just I just have a main volume switch here in front of me. It's only incoming, okay. We're not recording, or Jonathan, correct me? Or did we start recording and then stop? Nope, we're we're recording. Okay, just making sure. And I I think that we'll we'll just keep it on unless there's uh, like a really full stop for a while for okay. reason. So Larry, in this instance, with Atlanta still moving forward and the ship still moving forward, um, would we be able to turn around uh, Hercules to kind of book back towards us and then kind of run a little bit of a, a, a grid like a little this grid light while we're waiting? At a constant height off the bottom. Yeah, off constant height. Dan, did you hear that? Uh, <laughs> Dan, you're off SPL again. Yeah, so, the, so Jonathan uh, is hoping we can do a small little grid-like survey as we're waiting for uh, the ship move, um, which would involve turning back on yourself, and I, I don't know if that's feasible, but... Uh, we just kind of got the whole uh, mess moving here, so... The reason I ask is just because if we do kind of book back towards ourselves every now and then, we'll actually get a more complete model of what's behind those rocks. Uh, yeah, you might see behind me. Typically, uh, ROVs don't back up, so uh, usually no, it's... Sorry, I wasn't talking back up, but yeah, literally... Tr turn, turn around. Yeah, yeah, but usually there's a... Uh, yeah, in this case, you might see something. <laughs> usually it's... Uh, my analogy is uh, pick up truck driving down a dirt road at 60 miles an hour. It's um, well disturbed behind us. So, so we're seeing in the in the lava here something interesting because it's transitioning yeah, from a pillow right. salt to much more what we call a sheet flow. You see this is, this is now not pillows over to the, to the left there. Oh wow. 
but uh, yeah. a much a much uh, yeah, yeah. more even surface and you can actually uh, we just passed it uh, come down you actually see some ripples in, in in the in the lava as it cooled down what's that yeah right here all right Yeah, that's looking back the way we came. So somebody asked, uh, is it called pillow lava because it's so soft? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 it's actually quite hard. Yeah, it's, it's called it's pillows because they kind of look like big cushy pillows. Yeah. Uh, but I think they wouldn't be that comfortable to lay your head down on. <laughs> um, I turned the wrong way there. And somebody asked, uh, when you say columnar basalt, it's cooling slowly. How slow is slow? Hours, days, weeks? Oh, that's a great question, and I I don't know the answer. I would think it's it's weeks and days, maybe months, because it started off very very hot. Um, as opposed to, again to the pillows, which are we what we call quenched. They're 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 nice like taking taking that. something hot and just oh, yeah. putting in cold water. Uh, you can feel free to add some beans. Okay, well, let's tell around. What is that? It's a sponge of some sort? Yeah, so oh. we've got a polio pogon sponge, the small um, sponge, and then the taller one is a Walteria sponge. Whoa. Uh, the Walteria sponge, you can see those glass spicules spicking out, which is why it looks so fuzzy. And each of them, what they're sitting on is not an organic. I assume yeah. that's part of the, the rock substrate, and I guess they, they get up there to, for some advantage. The higher they can be in the water column, probably the the better their filter feeding. Hey, Chris. Yeah. I got a mission for you. OK. Can you, uh, on one of your many KVMs over there, bring up the Norbit? Or no, sorry, the Stilcam NUC? Open a web browser. OK. So these ripples are interesting. Th these are likely sediment, fine sediment, that's been formed into ripples as opposed to um, what we saw earlier, which were actually um, ah, there we go. some ripples in the uh, in, in the sheet flow the itself, the sheet lava Captain. flow. All right, what's it at? 192.168.2134. Uh, Wait, really? 192? Uh, sorry, 10.1.70.213 forward slash mjpg underscore stream. 10.1.70.213 yeah. mjpeg underscore stream. Yeah. Nah. Really? Nah. 10.1.70.213. Chris? Say what? 10.1.70.213 slash mjpeg underscore stream. mjpg underscore uh, stream. No, uh, mjpg. MJ P G, yeah. Just yeah. Go, yeah. So, I'm um, sorry. I can take over here and do my screens and then uh, OBS. Raj. Uh oh. Yeah. Or do you, ha do you have them up in OBS somewhere, Jonathan? Well, we, you, you, you just okay. go Rachel, so we gotta. There. MJPEG. -E oh, sorry, JPEG. Okay. Cool. Uh, All right. Which one is that? That's 213. That's going to be the port one. Then uh, open another window and do uh, same thing, but 212, which is the starboard minute, a starboard camera. So it looks like we had another question coming in about how far light penetrates. Um, and in, in Larry, you're still really. Well, like uh, 20 dB above everybody else. All right, we have to ask video then. Video, if you can lower my uh, my volume. You, uh, you were quiet you before, that? and now you're loud. Do you, you did that on uh, still you were, you were quiet before. It was well, really that, low. This is on high pack. Yeah. Sir, no, do, do that on uh, still cam nook for me. Ah, uh, still cam nook. Yeah. Okay. So, Ella, is this okay volume then? Um, I think so. I think it's fine. Dan, is it okay for you? Uh, let me see if I put... Uh, Maybe you can turn down your... Uh, well, if, if I turn down SCF, then I turn down everybody. 
So if I turn SCF to zero, right. then if I turn that down, then I can't hear Jonathan or Taylor Ann or anybody. Yeah. Uh, can you turn down? I think he's in Psi right. Yeah, I'm, I'm Psi right. I'm not SCF. Yeah, but that doesn't do anything unless I'm listening to him, right? Yeah. I, right. I can try okay. that. Yeah. Okay, talk now, Larry. Oh, I don't have anything to say, but I'll... See, no, that just makes it louder if I have okay. him selected on SCF and listening to him. You have to do it from from over there. So, so how far does light penetrate? Yeah, so in the in the upper ocean, um, front sunlight will penetrate easily, depending on the clarity of the water, 100, 200 meters, and then we get into what we call the mesopelagic right, zone, up. and probably by okay, then on this panel here, meters, press no uh, light at all. Lay so out. where we are now at 1400 meters, press the switch. only light that lay we out. have is from the camera. Uh, lay from the, uh, uh, right, lights lay on the uh, oh. Yeah, and then select head two, uh, slot one. one, head two. Okay. Slot one, head two, yep. And then go back to, uh, was that your camera running away? Someone's right. writing in, why don't we see fish or um, more sea life? Well, then go back to picture and picture. I'll ask. PIP. Well, right now you sound layout. really low, Larry. <laughs> PIP. <laughs> I haven't touched a thing, and I'm not talking and any then, differently. So, uh, wait a minute, why didn't that work? Yeah, um, I'm actually Sorry. surprised we haven't seen that many fish. Um, yeah. I've seen a lot of fish at deeper depths than this, but you know, food availability um, is a huge uh, issue sorry. in the deep sea. Lot two head one. Is that it? Yeah, in theory, yeah, as we go up it. this feature, uh, we now should select, uh, um, P start IP seeing uh, right with a lot these more colonizations of corals and select PIP nine. Other things. Yeah. The last one. Yeah, PIP eight. Yeah, and so if you think about it, what we were talking uh, about earlier, how we have lots of the phytoplankton at the that. surface, yep. that's where that. a lot of the production is. And, and then turning on that the right side, scroll through CO2 the PCs, and, uh, one through into four. Food. So that's where we'd expect to see a lot more of the fish. Uh, over where we are diving, the, the water was crystal clear blue at the surface too, so it's uh, one, not a lot of two, signs of huge productivity. Three, so the fish four. are going where the food is. and. Uh, as Larry said, maybe we'll to, see some uh, more food uh, as we go up and some more fish and, and corals and things that using is. that That's habitat. You? Yeah. Uh, Travis, can you introduce two. yourself? Ah, uh, yeah. So uh, my name okay. is Travis Courtney. Now and I'm an assistant professor KBM, at the University of uh, Puerto X. Rico in Mayaguez. And I'm here accompanied with a master's student, Ignacio Rueda. Um, and we're, we're and imaging the that. I'm really interested thingy. in seeing what's going on. Uh, up this slope. On page two, you'll see PC one through four. Yeah, uh, my name is Ignacio so Rada. Uh, I'm the, um, the master student here um, from the University there, of Puerto Rico. And, yeah, um, work. Uh, and it's pretty interesting there, so far uh, um, in my mind. Like We've seen a lot of zonation of different kinds of lava formations. Um, yeah, the stri like stratification Boom. maybe Thank as you. we keep on going up, we'll see how biodiversity changes uh -huh. depending on the resource allocation of you know the substrate and you know like as Travis said food availability and everything else okay I've wandered off the reservation here a little bit so Jonathan's going to continue to muck around in there and I have I just want to be able to see the stereo cameras I can see the uh, camera in front of me here. And so that other here looking down one is just, the screen there. I can't quite, I don't know, I could oh, try yay, dealing with fish. that. Oh, <laughs> I go back to layout. There is life. Yes. One, head one, picture, <laughs> picture. And I select picture. There's picture something one. on the right. Yeah, I'm I go up here that? to, uh, another sponge or, I don't have a good look on it. Starboard bucket. Why didn't that work? Oh, I selected the wrong uh -oh. picture. So picture, picture two. What's that? Yeah, how do I do that? <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't do anything unless I'm only listening to him. It doesn't do anything unless I'm off SPL and listening to him, then it adjusts his volume. So he's too loud on SPL. Yeah, so I'm only listening to him on SPL. 
if I turn it, him on and SPL, it's doubly loud. If you just joined us, we are a little bit over 1,400 meters in depth, and we are scanning along, um, getting some footage, later turning it into 3D so we can kind of swim around in VR and uh, give everyone that experience of being What's in the deep What's another PC that's not being used? How about uh, Norbit? Please. Yeah, by um, taking these Norbit photos along the slope, right we are, um, we're ho well, I'm hoping What's to that? find a lot of biodiversity. But even if we don't, it's it's so important because we're taking a snapshot of how this area looks right now. Hey, and so for future um, ROV hey, dives, Dan. you know, we can see, we can detect those changes in the future um, if there hey, is any big changes too. Can you just be a little patient with opening up browser windows? We're getting things configured back here. Can you be a little patient with opening up the browser windows? We're, we're getting things configured back here. Stop opening browser windows, please. Yep, and just a little extra context for those who, who just logged on. We're sort of waiting for everything to get in positioning here, and, and then we're going to be cruising up this slope. Uh, so we're basically going to be climbing an undersea mountain uh, with our ROV, and hopefully it will be a, a fun undersea hike. We'll see lots of changes along the way and some interesting new features. Uh, there were some uh, cryptic notes of really cool things in this area from previous expedition so hopefully we can find some of that but already this uh, uh, pillow lava has been really pretty cool at the bottom and yeah uh, that was really cool <laughs> yeah just to see a whole field of it like that and then that transition um, directly to that that more laminar feature really neat um, yeah pretty exciting so hopefully we'll we'll see some more fun as we're going up So remember, you can uh, type in questions or comments um, right under the quad button. There's a place for you to send in messages or questions. We would love to answer them. If you're watching on YouTube, go to nautiluslive.org and you'll see that box. OK, Dan, uh, we have it up on Triclops PC right now. Dan, listen. Dan, are you hearing Jonathan? We have it up on Triclops PC.
Yeah, you know, so this has to be sorted out. This is, it's yeah. going to get to be dangerous at some point here. So. Manel, or yeah. All right. Sorry, what was that? Sorry, what was that? Talking about Larry's. No, it's not just that. Dan, Dan, Dan also. Yeah. Okay, Larry and Dan. Yeah, that's what we're figuring out right now. Thank you. Well, a safe situation would be for Dan to be able to listen to SPL without it blasting his ears. Jonathan, Dan's trying to talk to you. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm on SPL. Okay, there you are. Just, uh, the previous behavior was that if I tried to change a resolution, it would freeze up OBS and crash the camera. So I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say we've reached a nominal configuration for this dive. And then um, let's plan on meeting next and messing around during blue water coming up. Are there any notations you would like me to add uh, of those settings, Jonathan, over Let's here? Let's go for uh, 40 meters. Cause I noted the porch 50 meters and everything. But I can't hear you. <laughs> All right. Sure. Let's go somewhere. Okay, me, Jonathan, uh, you're... Let me run up there. You're all set now? Yep. Yay. Okay, Dan, can you hear me at all? Too I loud? Can. Too yeah. Dan, can you hear me? No. Well, if Dan, I'm on SPL... Well, Dan, I'm, I'm talking direct to you now. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Maybe that's the problem. Don't talk direct to me and then try it. Well, well, I'm, I, this is the first time I've tried it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me see if I turn off SPL. Okay, try again there. I'm talking to you direct now. Oh, yeah. Okay. I got to hold that button down to do that, but that's okay. So, Dan, uh, so Jonathan supposedly is all set now. Supposedly. Jonathan? Yep. Yeah. I'm 100%. I can, uh, I can listen to you, Larry, so you don't have to hold the button. I'm listening. You listening? You can hear now? Yeah, I can oh, hear you. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> so, Jonathan is set. I'm not sure we have our audio levels all set. No, I uh, think they're going to get Dave. Yeah, okay, I think. I've broken it again. Yep. <laughs> okay. Where are you with uh, respect to the wall you were about to climb? I, uh, I can see, I can see on the Atalant. Uh, no, we're going we're gonna to do a, a vessel move towards the waypoint, so I'm just getting to the uh, west of Atalanta here. Okay. And then, um, Ray, if you could uh, look to the west there as I fly across. All right, so as soon as you get there, I and think we'll stutter uh, ascent. You can come up, Tim. Jonathan, there's a question from uh, Taylor Ann for you. Yeah, Taylor Ann, uh, so we are in nominal configuration now. 
we have all three cameras running at a 6K resolution. We're imaging one. Oh, you just got to type it all. <laughs> one picture per three seconds in DNG format. Looks like we have a couple of um, life forms right there. Yeah, I think as we're starting to see the slope up, that's probably uh, you guys down there know better than I do, but that's probably a much better position for them to be on the <laughs> on the slope than a, as opposed to be on the bottom in terms of filter feeding. I would assume as the currents come come around these structural highs, mm -hmm. um, yeah. hanging out on the slope and, and usually the top is probably the best place. Yeah. Absolutely. They look happy there. Yeah, yeah, it's all about finding the food. <laughs> you can see a lot of them too. They're you know tall and skinny, so they're trying to increase just how much food they can get. And, and just like a, a tree that kind of or a plant that bends up to the light, they're bending up to the current. That's very cool. Okay. Yeah, it does. And for me, or maybe. <laughs> Which way are you going to go? I thought you were going to go west. Yeah. There might be a bit of an offset there, I don't know. Because in theory, I'm, according to that, I'm west. That doesn't drive. Uh, look to your right a little bit. There's about a 30 degree offset to the left that we sometimes pick up and sometimes do not. So what we're going to try and do here uh, to make both of our lives easier is I'm going to try and stay in uh, what I refer to as my box, which is your uh, Atlanta screen. So that should minimize. Uh, so I'll ask you actually, and when we're transiting like this, it's easier for all three of us up here if if Atlanta's on the same he heading as our, is the ship's uh, course over ground. So if you're looking which way we're going, basically, then um, you shouldn't have to make any adjustments for your heading uh, or uh, your camera up and down if I stay in my box. Um, and if you let me know if you change your heading, because I'm going to use that now as a reference. So, and I'm going to wander around in that box a little bit, but I'm going to try and stay within it. Right? And then if we do go out of the box, then we can say, okay, bring our head to the right or whatever. Yeah. Okay. And that, no, you can. You just, you know, what everything I said is going to go out the window when they want to see something off to our left or a feature or whatever. But in general, that makes the transit easier because we're going to have now yeah, another stopping recording while we're waiting to uh, get dynamic up. where we're moving the ship moving at right. I'm you're going to be I'm going to get us rolling Dan what's that I'm going to get us rolling yeah Roger yeah I thought we were sorry uh, um, so Ridge your focus now, now main five focus zero is going to be to maintain seven, uh, 15 to 20 meter delta because we're going to be going up the hill and if yeah, so you should always have more altitude than you have delta, because you're always going to be behind me in the deeper water, and as we're going up the hill, uh, yeah. And if if we're not stopping to do samples or uh, stuff like that, then in theory we should be able to keep the ship moving the whole time. And if we want to stop and do zooms or whatever, I try and stay out at the top of that box, and then I can stop and do a quick zoom or whatever without getting out of the box and usually we have about uh, maybe less than a minute to do that if we're going 10 meters a minute so I'll try and stay two boxes ahead of you on the nav screen and if we stop for a minute then I'll be one box ahead of you and then I'll have to I'll have to make up that time right I'm gonna do a reset here for you Roger. There you go. Yeah, yeah, once we get the whole mess moving, you'll figure it out a bit more. But that 15 to 20 meter delta, you can just do that automatically without me having to. And then, uh, yeah, that's your primary goal, just to maintain that 15 to 20 meter delta. 
if we start going downhill or around or something, all that might change, of course. It's, so this is um, going to be more of what we typically do on here. We hike up the mountain with a flashlight in our hand in the dark. <laughs> There's another and fish. So I'll get out in front of you and I'll, you know, ooh, fish. And I'll, you know, play around and look at the fish for a minute. But that shouldn't affect um, the vessel moves or Atlantis Delta or anything like that because I'll do that again for maybe 60 seconds to get a highlight video or a zoom and then I'll I'll move on and, and get back back in the box as I'll you'll hear me say Jonathan, we have a question for you. Uh, would the 3D VR data mentioned earlier be available online? You know, uh, we actually put some of the first models online last night. Uh, they're available on Sketchfab right now. Uh, we processed, and this is just draft, to be really clear. You know, we haven't really done quite the level of detail we normally would since we're just testing more process and, and really not getting down into the weeds of making perfect models. But if you guys go to our Sketchfab account right now on your VR, AR headset, or just your computer, um, you can look at some of the columnar basalts that we saw just yesterday. Um, and if you do have a, a, a virtual reality headset, I'd encourage you, you can download the Sketchfab app on that VR headset, um, and using the uh, application, you can actually view that in full augmented reality right there in your living room. Um, quite remarkable, and uh, we definitely encourage you to, to try some of that. And hopefully throughout this cruise, we'll continue to do that um, as we improve the back-end processing of models on the fly. We also have a question about what everyone's favorite sea creature adaptation is. I think the ability to breathe underwater is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. I, I, I am amazed always with uh, the, abil the abilities of uh, octopi to uh, camouflage. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, that's really cool. Dan, um, how much longer do you think till we're set up? This is not working. Yes. He, he, he's not listening to SPL because he, he's not responding to me. No. Dan is not listening to SPL now. He's just talking. Right. Hey, Dan. Dan, Larry's trying to get you. Yeah. Now, I, we're going to have to find a way to resolve this because um, I, I think it's critical that you be able to hear what's the the questions and queries that come from the back here. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so the question is how long till we are able to start the transit up? We're moving up or we're just we're moving west to the... Yeah, we're, we're yeah, we're moving. We're moving up. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, ship's moving. It, we're, Argus is kind of getting, starting to swing. 
Okay, I am uh, starting the report. Bridge, bridge, Roger. nav, another five zero meters, two seven five. Yep. We had some data and then we waited around, so I stopped the record and we're, we're collecting now. Yep. Theoretically. Where are at? Huh? Where should it be? It's going to be... <laughs> yeah, I, just, I, I kept trying to read you there, and I was, uh, I was getting concerned. I'm trying to figure out what, what, what this texture we're seeing is. Is this, is this a sufficient rock texture? Is it a... Yeah, I'm not sure. The pre some of the previous expeditions, they, they had noted a bunch of sand and then also some rock falls. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what this texture is that, and that we're seeing. It you know, doesn't look like either of those. Oh. Uh, this looks like maybe yeah yeah the, just a, a substrate with a very light sediment cover. I, I, uh. Yeah, that's my guess. Yeah, looks like hard bottom underneath. Yeah, like you wouldn't be able to take a push core for sure. Yeah. No, it's, prob it's probably just a cheap cheap flow like material, but it has mm -hmm. a, a little bit of sediment. Dan, I really like that. That's a good standoff distance from the bottom. Okay, yeah, that, that's a, it's a lot clearer image of the bottom. Yeah. I, I just couldn't make it out. Hey, Dan, that's a really good standoff distance from the bottom. I don't, I don't think he has SPL on, does he? Mm -hmm. I think he turned it off. Oh, look at that. Um, video, could we please get um, the Triclops PC on the upper right big monitor, please? It's uh, Triclops, Tri, T-R-I. Should be a dedicated um, link and not one of the PCs. I definitely don't have any uh, qualms about Zeus pointing down like this uh, in a steady configuration. It's actually great for what we're doing. And that is a rock, oh, a what rock that? pen. That's a rock pen right there, a type of a C pen. So we're slowly moving uphill. It's difficult to tell when we're that close, but uh, just watching the the depths, we're, we're we are moving uphill. It's certainly uh, not an oasis of life down here. Uh, sorry, Manal. Uh, any luck on the upper right-hand monitor of the quad for Triclops? Oh, also that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, Thank here's, you. A, here's an interesting contact here. Mm -hmm. well, looks like a conglomerate. Yeah, this looks like one of those slides, huh? Wow, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. And, and uh, the slope has changed. Does that look? 
Yeah, much deeper. Lots oh, of things nice. taking advantage of that yeah. extra topography. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm. Well, they reported seeing dikes, and that, that, that indeed looks like a dike. This, yeah, absolutely. This solid, uh, thin piece here. Bridge, bridge now. This Let's add another 5 0. Magna that's been injected into a crack, basically. Wow, you can wow. really see like well, all created uh, a crack. Yeah, yeah that's bird. really cool. That's fantastic. Wow. And you can see the cross section, uh, the, the actual cooling yeah. of it. Roger, five zero more. The tripods is doing a fantastic job of getting the size as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Creating a, a nice, uh, complete picture. Interesting again how the the life, whatever those squishy things are, um, is really sitting up on that little local high. And again, mm -hmm. I assume that because it, it helped interrupt the current and mm. help them in the fil filter feeding. Uh, so Taylor Ann, are those uh, anemones or? So these are crinoids. Um, oh, okay. These are different than crinoids that I've seen. Uh, I'm not sure if these are the swimming type because they seem to have these like root-like structures underneath them that are holding mm. them onto the rock. Um, most crinoids that I'm used to seeing can kind of fly around or swim, sorry. And uh, we're also seeing some polypopagon sponges um, really long bamboo coral whip up there with a crinoid yeah. on top of it. Ooh. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this is really, I love the, the depth of field here that we're getting, oh, all these different it, angles. It, 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 it's so <laughs> neat how the, the crinoids are, are just right along the top of the dike. Yeah. That's Ideal the rubble, the rubble in the background there is interesting, too. I mean, things, wow. what a light thing is doing around here. <laughs> yeah, we really chose a good spot, y'all. We did. Yeah, this is really, really cool. Yeah. Wow. And that looks like it might be a bamboo yeah. coral, possibly the I-4 clade. Great piloting, Dan. This is exactly what we need. This kind of wobble, wobble, wobble. <laughs> so, Taylor Ann, what's your favorite sea creature adaptation? Adaptation? Hmm. The gulper eels are cool, but I don't know how you would describe that <laughs> the adaptation of its of its jaw to be able to unhinge in that way. Mode wow, of ingestion. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. Right. Now, Larry, what's uh, the the white rock? Uh, that's got me confused. I'm, I'm, that's really interesting. Hmm. Yeah. It's a, it's a coating of some sort. The rock itself isn't white, but I'm not sure what. Oh man! Look at look 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 at that! We see it with all no. these dikes coming up. Say what? Bridge, bridge, nav, hold position. Look in the fish eye, the, the starboard fish eye, yep. that big arc. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Yeah, what is What's that? What's going on? Hmm. Well, I think we're seeing a series of dikes. Wow. Kind of, as lava came out along this with steep slope, it was, yeah. you know, in these little cracks or creating cracks. Are you in a position to grab a rock? Are you, uh, would, ruin, would ruin the transit thing. Okay. I'd love to find out what the white coating is on the we can, rock. We can get nice and close, though. There have been ro a lot of rock samples collected near mm -hmm. this site before um, from the Pisces dives, oh. as well as, uh, yeah, in uh, 1998 and 2011, they collected, I think, eight or nine rock samples each. Um, so yeah, we could even try to look I'm back sure at that old data, too. I'm sure they're, most, they're all the salts of some sort, but I'm just wondering what the white coating is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder. I'll have to look back at the footage to see if that was visible back then as well. Yeah, I don't recall, I don't recall that. that. Yeah, me either. Well, this actually looks more uh, like an ash fall. Here you can see a really nice visual of all the sort of, it almost looks like all the organisms are just covering onto the dike. Mm -hmm. yep. And so they're really flocking for that high spot. And so these really nice intersection of geology creating habitat and controlling that ecological zonation. Pretty cool. All 
on sap feed three, you have a really nice view of that really long linear dike feature too. Just running up. Wow. Someone commented about crinoids walking. Can, yeah, uh, so some crinoids swim, and then uh, I'm assuming these types of crinoids, which I've never seen before personally, um, must be able to use those appendages to move, um, which is how we probably saw that one on top of that really long bamboo coral whip. It'd be really interesting to see one move. Yeah. <laughs> uh, viewers asking if fungi would also be found. Say that again, Dan. Fu fungi, fungus, if uh, if any would be found in like on these dikes or anywhere near here. Well, I think the key is uh, we want to continue to go up. Yeah. Yeah. Keys and also. Up. Uh, we're, we're quite high off the... Another thing that the white uh, matter could be, which I'm not sure how likely it is, um, but potentially a bacterial right. mat covering. I'll give you an another 2-0. I, I know that's typical to see in sediment sometimes. Uh, um, two I've seven never seen that five. On, on rock, but I'm sure that could, bridge, could be Bridge, bridge nav, 2 zero meters, 275. Yeah, and there certainly are, you know, different types of fungi in the ocean, and, uh, you know, there's a lot, certainly a lot we don't know in terms of fungi interactions with the rest of the biota. So certainly, uh, whoever asked that question, if you have an interest in uh, deep sea fungi, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting, as you look at the dike, you see kind of a mini version of the columnar basalts. So yeah, right, you're as right. The, as the dike cooled, got that same pattern. I'm highlighting all the cool dikes. Awesome. No, you're gonna get mad at me later, Jonathan. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Jacob, it's not a sea cucumber, okay? These are for you. This yeah. is cool. I like geology. <laughs> <laughs> this will be really nice too for for the biological surveys coming up because that really all of our our benthic life seems to be loving uh, all these dike features for for substrates to grow on. So I, I'm assuming that's a topographic preference, but I wonder if there's a, a chemical preference, a geochemical preference too. That something about sitting on the on the you know the, the pure basalt as opposed to the the, the sedimented seafloor provides well maybe a an easier place to anchor in one in one way. But I wonder if they. Wow! Look at that oh. big shield. Wow! Yeah, that's a great question. That. There was also that first dike we saw, you could see the sort of talus slope falling on either side of the dike. And so some of these dikes might even provide some protection from, from landslides. Uh, maybe we'll get some more clues as we, we keep moving up. A viewer says that there is a video online with the crinoids walking. Yes, so. very cool. What's our standoff distance, 